Good morning, dear students. Watching this live program on soft skills for all undergraduate students of uh, government degree colleges. Today, I am here with uh, Dr. M. Nancy Serena Madam and I am Dr. T. S. Pravin Kumar. We are from government colleges. Before we start the paid teaching on uh, soft skills, we would like to thank uh, the sponsors of this program, the Commissioner of College Education and all the team members associated with this program. Good morning, madam. Good morning, sir. And good morning, dear students. Oh. So today, let's start the program with uh, a survey report on soft skills. And uh, when we study the survey made by the Harvard University, they say that soft skills are very important uh, in today's life, especially for students. And uh, the study say, shows that 80% of soft skills are important and 20% of hard skills. In the same way, experts also say that the training related to soft skills should begin at the college level and it has to continue to the professional workplace. And McDonald's of USA made a study and what they said is by 2020, half million of youngsters are in a danger of losing their positions or jobs because uh, for want of soft skills. So with this background in view, I think we should start the discussion or the pay teaching. And before we start, let's have a look at the international arena. So when we look at the corporate world or the top-notch industries or the well world reputed in industries, besides public and private sector, we find that there is a great demand for young generation who are equipped with soft skills. And because of this, this demand has creeped into even the education sector, especially with regard to the higher education and our degree college students. So taking this into consideration, uh, we'll focus on what uh, soft skills are. And before that, what skill set is. And uh, I want you, madam, to share your valuable time yes, regarding skill set. Yeah. Uh, sir, as uh, you have uh, introduced this program very well, uh, it's about our students who have uh, come into degree colleges after completing their plus two or intermediate. And uh, they will be there in the degree college for three years. And uh, apart from uh, gaining the knowledge in their core subjects, what is very important is how much they learn uh, with regard to the soft skills, with regard to the communication skills, the technical knowledge which they, uh, which they attain in the college and how well they become job ready and employable. So uh, this uh, uh, responsibility is vested on the shoulders of English teachers and uh, it has become very challenging for the English teachers to train, to groom uh, the students so that they can become job ready and acceptable to the present needs of the society. So dealing with the uh, skills set, there are many different kinds of skills that we look into and one such skill that we already know is that we, uh, we have as a topic is soft skills and this is on the contrary uh, quite opposite to the hard skills. Hard skills are the competencies that one acquires uh, through a degree. They have either a BA degree or a BSc degree or a BCom degree. But soft skills is something that is in addition to the hard skills. And uh, it uh, actually complements, soft skills complement the hard skills. And hard skills are considered to be something like writing and you have typing, you have mathematical calculations, etc. <coughs> but soft skills, they deal with how you carry yourself, the demeanor, and how you speak, and how you relate things to others. These are certain things which are very important for a student to learn in the classroom. And uh, the other skill sets that we deal with is the, the technical knowledge that they have. So uh, this uh, can be gained along with the core subjects, 
not just soft skills. So, they have to have a proficiency over software, over data analysis, programming languages, web design, etcetera. So, whenever they need to present such things, they require good communication skills, they, good, they require good soft skills. So, at that time, English plays a very vital role, not just English, but even etiquette and grooming plays a very important role. And then we all look for employability skills because the main goal after finishing three years of graduation is to make them suitable for good employment. Maybe it may be in the private sector or in the government sector. So, employable skills are very important and they need to uh, be um, ready for any kind of interview. So, usually interview skills also play a very important role while educating them in three years of degree course. And uh, yes, sir. Okay, madam. Fine. So, this is uh, a brief introduction of uh, what soft skills are yes. and the importance to our students. And when we think of soft skills, we are supposed to focus on other skills also related yes. to soft skills, which I have already mentioned that is hard skills, employable skills yeah. and external technical skills, uh, professional and life skills. Yes, sir. But uh, to reach these levels of skills, one needs to focus on soft skills along with hard skills. Already our students have the hard skills with them. But the only thing is when it comes to the point of presentation at the time of interviews, they need soft skills. So, based on these uh, correlated skills, skills which are uh, important to the students from the academic point of view and also from the professional point of view, uh, we think that uh, hard skills are the dynasty and uh, soft skills are more important than hard skills. That is as the survey has shown yes. and not only survey. While we teach in the classes, we find the students lack uh, soft skills. Yes. Only few students yeah. know the basics of soft skills. So, it is a dynasty and today we are going to focus on the soft skills. Yes. So, we will start the program with uh, the six basic questions related to soft skills. That is the WH skills and the H skills. On the slide students, you can see the five W's and the one H related to soft skills. Yeah. The first thing <coughs> is, what are soft skills? What do you mean by soft skills? Second one, why do we need soft skills? And the third one is, when do we use or when we are supposed to use soft skills? And who are going to use soft skills? At what point of time and how? So, these are the basic questions related to soft skills. Yeah. And uh, uh, a brief definition of what soft skills means. Soft skills are nothing but skills which are essential for each and every student or a candidate uh, to present himself or herself in the workplace whether it is a college or it is a, a an office or a corporate sector. Yeah. It is nothing but a human interaction. Yes, yeah, how, how well you interact with so others. Skills, yeah. generally we think that soft skills are something which we attain from training, going to some coaching centers and all yes. these things. Uh -huh. But basically every human has got uh, soft skills. The only thing is the student should know how to make use of the soft skills. Yeah. And on the slide you can also see that soft skills go with uh, some other skills. That is soft skills are nothing but they are an amalgamation of uh, people, people skills, skills, social skills, communication skills, character traits, social and uh, emotional intelligence. And these skills are all inborn. The only thing is we should know how to get those skills out, how they are exposed and how they are useful for presenting the personality of a candidate. And the first thing we see on the slide is people skills. Yeah. People skills nothing but we as a part of a society are supposed to make use of our skills whenever the time demands. The same thing with social skills also. Communication is the important one for a yeah. student because the time he spends in the college, he is supposed to communicate. And communication takes place at different levels. Middle. As we know that there are basic skills of uh, learning language yes. that is LSRW and these communication skills go with them. Yeah. And uh, once a student has these skills, we can assess the character of the student whether he is suitable for the job, whether he is suitable for the multinational company or whether he can take a very administ good administrative post at higher levels. So, coming to that, we will start with the first point of uh, what uh, soft skills are and uh, I would like you to focus on uh, these things madam, how one can attain soft skills, how, on, how one can develop soft skills uh, which are related to their personal characteristics. So, I, usually actually we begin with the classroom sir. And uh, in the classroom itself, like as English teachers, we encourage our students to speak yeah. in English. Yes. That's the first and foremost thing. And when they come uh, and they join in their first year, 
the sessions they begin with uh, self introduction yeah. or maybe introducing others and so that they can open up become free and then we start the other activities and uh, that's how we actually try to give them confidence that they can speak uh, english and they they can uh, they can be uh, free enough to speak in front of everybody without any stage fear Uh, because uh, most of the students uh, who study in government degree colleges they come from different backgrounds diverse backgrounds and for them to speak in english is a challenge and we need to create a situation wherein they feel very comfortable to speak so as uh, you have said that soft skills are important and they are also called as people skills people skills is nothing but interacting with others very comfortably uh, very conveniently without thinking about what others feel Yeah. So uh, even according if, to the situation. Yes, according to the situation. situation. And uh, there are certain things related to soft skills, madam. Students are supposed to develop their personality. Yes. And uh, it is possible by acquiring soft skills. Yeah. And uh, for this, for the sake of the students, we can find some points on the slide. Yeah. How one can develop uh, the personality related to soft skills. Yeah. The first one is as students, they are supposed to get education, and once they join the institutions, once they seek education they are supposed to groom themselves yes. according to the situation that is nothing but adaptability to the environment so teachers are also supposed to create that kind of atmosphere in the classroom yes. environment yeah. uh, which will enable the students groom themselves according to the situation and not only that besides grooming they are supposed to observe so teacher plays a very important role here teacher is a role model to the student so whatever uh gestures he make whatever signs he make with his uh, body the postures and all these things the students can observe and learn from them so it is very important because every student uh, uh, will make will make an observation of the teacher, teacher. they try to emulate the yes, teacher yes and besides that once they reach a stage because once they join the first year they'll be doing all these things grooming mm -hmm. part and observation yes. part and once they enter the second year or the third year we are supposed to give them certain kind of training to them by which the soft skills present to the students will be useful for their personal and academic mm -hmm. life and uh, uh, improving soft skills madam needs a systematic uh, training or a study uh, one has to seek soft skills as a logical point so there are certain points on the slide for the students madam could you please uh, focus on this point yeah uh, if you if you look at the slides the first one is organization and planning how well they organize their things yeah. uh, and this depends uh, we can start off with activities again in colleges and how well they uh, they organize their activities it can be any activity like writing an essay or it can be a presentation or it can be a group discussion how well they organize themselves and how well they plan all the points for the presentation yes. creativity is something which is you know very interesting so we need to give students the the opportunity or the chances to think new to innovate new uh, innovate new things and come up with their ideas and then leadership leadership is built in the classroom yeah. and th that has to be encouraged by the teacher and uh, we need to identify students who are really very shy who don't want to speak up in front of others and then bring them and create uh, a sense of leadership in in their personality and then activities again help students to uh really build teamwork and we have many such programs one such program is the group study projects which yes. really help students to team up and then they uh, they together they do the work and they present it this also develops lot of confidence in them and uh, it enhances the individuality and decision making also is considered to be very important at the student stage itself they they are supposed to make some crucial decisions which will really help them uh to make important decisions when they start working so this also can be done with small activities teachers can help them in giving small activities so that they can make some important decisions so that's how uh, we can change the classroom the entire scenario can be changed especially when you are teaching soft skills so that students can engage themselves in various activities and come out so it, uh, it, here while teaching um, soft skills the teachers role is very passive and uh, it is a student who has to be highlighted in the classroom yes madam that is uh, that is very apt to the situation and uh, when we generally think of uh, the life of the students madam not only in corporate sector but also in government colleges 
Uh, these days we find number of students discontinuing their studies. Uh, sometimes they end their life unable to yeah. cope up with the pressure of the studies. And uh, the points which we have discussed till now, that is uh, organizational planning and all these things. Uh, we think that uh, there are a separate set of uh, 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 separate aspects yeah. which can be, but uh, uh, the students are very lucky that the curriculum or the syllabus designing includes all these points mm, in their subjects. Yes. Especially in life skills. Uh, yes, life skills is so important for them to know the challenges of life. Of life. Li and yeah. uh, not only that, madam, uh, for each and everything, whatever work we do, we need some organization yes. and planning. So once a student joins a college, he's supposed to organize his life and plan how to cope up with his studies. Yes. Not only that, we have students who are uh, brilliant and excellent, but they keep quiet. Yeah. So these soft skills, when we teach them or when we discuss with them, when we have an interaction with them, that is a kind of effective interaction and it leads to better learning. And there we can find students coming up with the team leadership and also decision making is important yeah. because most of the students generally depend on the parents for decision making. And if parents are well educated, they can guide the students. Yeah. But uh, our students are not fortunate to have uh, well educated parents and parents uh, leave the responsibility on the students itself. Yes. So their decision making is very important. Yeah, especially in the final year of the course. Yes, ma'am. Because whether to, to pursue their education uh, based on their financial uh, situation, situation or uh, or to take up a job, they, they are always in a dilemma. Or to take a petty job uh, yes. which is not uh, suitable for their uh, uh, the education which they receive from the college. And here critical thinking is also very important. Yes. Critical thinking in the sense uh, we give the students some notes and we give them some information. The students only focus on those points. They never try to apply their own mind uh, related yes. to the subject. Mm -hmm. But when you have soft skills, when the students are equipped with them, they will try to put some, raise some yes. questions, make some independent thinking. Yeah, starts, they will have yeah. independent thinking. So these soft skills are not only related to language, but they're related to their lives. And uh, once they equip themselves with them, they will come out as uh, brilliant students, madam. Yes, sir. Uh, the, we'll go to the next point. Uh, till now we have discussed uh, what soft skills are and uh, how they're related to the life of a student. But why do students need them? Especially we are dealing with college students and why do we need these soft skills for the academic life and the personal life of students? What is the purpose behind it? Could you please comment, madam? Yes, sir. That is, yeah. So one thing that we notice is uh, uh, soft skills are required for a very good interaction. So the, the catch word is positiveness. So a good positive interaction with others. Yeah. So uh, 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 the activities in the classroom, is, uh, the textbook activities itself, sir, I think they are plenty in number. Yes. And this facilitates good positive interaction. And then uh, soft skills also give the ability to overcome challenges, as we have seen. So m many a times students feel depressed, but you know, uh, learning about life skills, learning about different situations, or maybe uh, trying to draw inspiration from others really helps them to overcome challenges in life. And uh, uh, soft skills are important, and that's the reason why if, if a person is endowed with soft skills, the hard skills that they have already attained through degrees that becomes really valuable for each and every student and it becomes very easy for them to get a good job as well yes and then uh, soft skills they ensure productivity and it also helps in collaborative work uh, students tend to work in two different ways sometimes they have to work individually and soft skills teaches them how to be uh, dependent on themselves and sometimes they have to work in groups yes. and so at that time they have to interact with others they need to agree to others uh, ideas and feelings and how well they cope up with others that also is very important, very important. and it comes under collaborative learning yeah. so all this really creates a very healthy environment in the classroom classroom yeah. so dear students uh, I request you to focus on the points mentioned on the slide. That is, the first one is uh, soft skills facilitate. I use the word facilitate. Yeah. So teacher plays the role of a facilitator. And the next one is uh, it provides. And it provides what able people to the industries or to the multinational companies. And once you join a multinational company, you are supposed to undergo number of challenges. And soft skills will help you will provide you the necessary inputs which makes you face the challenges. 
not only that the last one it ensures you uh, productive thinking collaborative approach and it creates a healthy environment healthy environment not only related to classroom but at the workplace and even at your home if you have soft skills you can deal with number of situations related to your personal life yeah. so that is the reason why we need to focus on soft skills and uh, coming to the point where do we use these soft skills generally when we think of soft skills we think of certain situations yes. environments atmosphere so madam so actually we learn it in the classroom yeah and then we use it for life yes. at different places yes especially the place where a student gets a job, job. in future workplace workplace yes madam that is so one more point yeah and uh, the main point is it helps us for career building yeah soft skills are very important for building one's career at two places one is the college and the one is the workplace mm. and uh, regarding to classroom uh, we can use the word soft skills in a different form we can use the word transferable skills yeah. or it is also called as a 21st century skills because the word soft skills has a history and uh, in america they made a study and they coined the word soft skills and they gave the definition also soft skills are related to uh, one's attitude to work one's attitude to gain knowledge and one's attitude to present information to others so they said nowadays though you have hard skills unless you are you have soft skills uh, you are not employable so therefore they say they are transferable skills yeah. or 21st century skills the latest the in yeah. demand skills yeah yes madam so when we say that soft skills are related to classroom and they are transferable they carry certain features madam so uh, would you like to uh, comment on these features of the soft skills madam which we use in classroom so one thing i just like to mention regarding transferable skills yes, the skills that we learn in the classroom they are called as transferable because you can uh, follow the same method when you start working yeah. so you can relate it uh, to not only your workplace but also to life and uh, we can uh, and one more point that uh, we have already discussed is in our in the slides is the character traits that yes. you have mentioned yes. so these character traits are a part and parcel of soft skills and uh, you know we have uh, many such qualities like responsibility integrity loyalty fairness forgiveness courage politeness yeah. and reliability optimism self discipline all these things are actually the qualities which are taught in the classroom by the english teacher yes, like we uh, we at least tell them the importance of all these qualities yeah. and there are many such uh, topics like mot on motivation confidence and goal setting which are uh, uh, emphasized by the english teacher so these things really build the soft skills of the students yeah. and they remember it for life yes yeah. generally when a student possesses all these uh, qualities uh we use the word soft spoken yes we say he is soft spoken or she is soft spoken yes uh in other words the candidate very gentle all, and yeah, polite the candidate carries all these kinds of uh, qualities but uh, uh, a point uh, which is uh, which should not directly relate to the topic so when we think of the present uh, honorable chief minister or the former chief minister they used to conduct some classes even for the mls and the ministers and we look at the Uh, behavior and mannerism of the MLS. They try to emulate the leader. Generally, we find people emulating Kesia the way he speaks. Mm. Others also will try to follow. And even regarding uh, the Honorable Prime Minister also, the way he presents, the way he gives his speeches, others knowingly or unknowingly they follow the same kind of pattern. So the role played by the leader in a respective field, and when we come to our classrooms also, we are also playing a role yes. model. so students generally follow what the teacher presents yes the way he expresses his feelings mm. the way he teaches and uh, in the coming days in the future they will try to emulate the teacher so generally we point out some students uh, you talk like your uh, teacher or you represent the feelings of your teacher so these these things are very important and uh, the role of a teacher is very important yeah. so these qualities first should be reflected in the teacher yes so that they can be followed and emulated by the student yes madam yeah. and we'll come to the next point madam yeah how need soft skills generally the topic is going on related to the topic is continuing related to students and classroom 
and generally when we come to the question who needs soft skills uh, our uh, main focus will be on the student itself and we will see why he needs them why students need soft skills yeah. to, to, uh, to start off every individual actually needs uh, soft skills but particularly we are dealing with students because it is the students who are actually uh, trying to build their career yeah. so that's the reason why they, re they need it and uh, uh, they are there most of the time with us in the college so right from morning till evening they are with us and it is our responsibility to teach them soft skills so that they can become better individuals better uh, employ, uh, employ employers employees in their uh, uh, workplace and try to organize things and become successful in life yes madam so first point is students need soft skills yeah. at the same time employers also need soft skills yeah. and the third one is organizations so when we come to students they need soft skills because they should be in a position to express what they know they need that kind of a potential potential or a capacity yeah. to express the knowledge and coming to the employers they are selecting students who have these skills yes and coming to the organizations they seek or they find out such kind of people or candidates who can go on in the career of their uh, industries or whenever they work yeah. in their companies they need people who can cope up with the challenge of uh, the particular, that particular sector. organization so therefore yeah. soft skills are not only meant for students mm -hmm. it is also a point related to the organizers and also to the employers, employers. so these people they need soft skills and uh, coming to the point of employers madam why they seek soft skills in the candidates so there are certain points, points which yeah. each and every student has to focus the first one is uh, communication every teacher expects students to speak interact to communicate and not only that to encourage this kind of communication students con conduct certain type of activities in the classroom hmm. that is the pair teaching pair work and also group work they work as a team and besides that they also have to take certain decisions they have to make some observations whenever teachers gives them an assignment yes. and uh, it is not for the sake of uh, assignment itself they have to do they have to put their brains into it that is called critical observation critical, yes. and the next one is uh, wherever there is a difficulty um, difficulties generally arise whenever we take up a work or yeah. uh, if it is a simple work or a complicated one there is a conflict so as human beings as students we are supposed to resolve the conflicts yeah. So even these things are very important. Even if there is a uh, disagreement, yes. how, how well you uh, bring about a solution yeah. in the classroom, that also is very important. So these things are very important for them. Yeah. And once you have all these qualities, you are definitely going to become a leader. You, mm -hmm. will, you will attain or you will acquire leadership qualities, yes. which are very important for the present society. We need students not only as academicians, but also as good leaders. And uh, coming to the next point, madam. So we have discussed what soft skills are, why do we need them, who needs them and now we have to focus on when these soft skills are useful for the students or when do we need soft skills and the first one is as we have discussed it, it is we need it in the classroom, classroom yeah. because we interact with students and uh, can you point out some other things related to the classroom interaction madam? In the classroom again we have so many activities and one such activity is the presentation skills. Yes. So, uh, while uh, students present uh, dif on different topics, I think uh, soft skills are very important, especially when we give a chance uh, for them to come on the stage and speak. Uh, uh, it is uh, uh, that particular opportunity teacher, a teacher can take up and groom the students, yeah. how well they stand and how well they, they uh, present in front of the class and how well they speak, their voice, their modulation, all these things come into picture and we can make slight corrections and make them perfect uh, for their presentation. Yes, that is one. Coming to this point, madam, presentation. Uh, at this juncture, we have to appreciate the efforts made by the Office of CCE because uh, they are providing number of opportunities for the students as well as for the teachers. One such program is uh, Jignasa. So Jignasa is such a program where students come up with their own presentations. Though the point, uh, the time is uh, very limited, yes. still within the same amount of time available to them, they try to present their uh, uh, study projects. Yeah. They also express their feelings. 
So presentation point of view is taken care of by our officers. At the same time, we also create situation in the, in the college. Yes. Whenever we have uh, <coughs> programs related to cultural activities mm. or academic programs, we invite students to present uh, on any topic of their choice. This is related to the classroom situation, madam. So once they acquire all these kinds of skills, like uh, critical observation and presentation, communication, uh, one day or the other, they have to find a job. Yes. And these days, uh, job seeking is very difficult. Nobody, no one gives a job free of cost. Yes. So we are supposed to face an interview. Yeah. And in the interview, when you do not have the sufficient soft skills, you are thrown out. So these soft skills are not only meant for classroom interaction, they are also meant for interviews. Interview, yeah. And once you get a job, you are supposed to sustain your job. You are supposed to be very professional in whatever you do. At the same time, our life is not only related to the classroom and also the workplace. We are directly related to the society. So we have a number of opportunities where we are invited to speak yes. as students and also as teachers and also as leaders. So I think at this juncture, soft skills will help us. So to the question, when do we need soft skills? Soft skills are important for classroom. Any kind of presentation, yeah, presentation for interviews. To face interviews. Yeah. And next one to sustain our jobs. Yeah, in the, in the professional front, front and then any kind of social event yeah. where a student goes or attends. Attends. And uh, the very important one is how can we acquire these soft skills? Do we need any special kind of training or can we make an observation of uh, people who are very uh, excellent in the presentation of soft skills or who are excellent in their presentation? So we made a study. And in the study, we came to know that according to anthropological survey or anthropologists, they say that we communicate in two different ways. One is through words and one is through actions. So according to the survey, the words which we use is only 35%. That is, we make only 35% verbal communication. And the remaining 65 is through non-verbal or non-linguistic form. It is also called through body language. Yeah. And uh, uh, in your... Mm -hmm. uh, Regular classroom teaching, yeah. madam. Uh, you might have observed students, whenever yes. we pose them questions, they may not give answers, but they will try to do some body. Yeah, uh, they try to give some cues. Cues, uh, yeah. okay. Yeah. So uh, we would like to focus on the non-verbal yes. point of uh, communication also, madam. Yes, sir. Uh, let's start with So the one, uh, yeah, because verbal communication just plays 35% uh, of uh, its role, uh, we are uh, highlighting on the non-verbal communication and the first one which is uh, very significant and very important is the eye contact yeah. and how well you uh, interact with others depends on the eye contact that you have. So uh, they say that when you speak to somebody you need to look into the eyes of the person. It doesn't mean that you have to stare at that person that again becomes a negative point but you need to have the right eye contact with the person that is one. And uh, having a good eye contact, it, uh, uh, it shows that uh, you have a lot of confidence and whatever you are saying is uh, very true and very correct. So that is uh, the kind of opinion people get when you have the right eye contact. And if you have shifty eyes, like if you don't look at the person and if you are looking elsewhere, and that shows that the person is having lack of confidence. Confidence, yeah. yes. So students on the slide, you find a mother holding uh, her child and uh, you know that the child cannot communicate but here the mother looks into the eyes of the child and vice versa. Yeah. So with this eye contact not only speaks about our mind it also speaks about our heart. Yeah, it, uh, so in the mind emotions. we have different feelings yeah. positive, negative and the state of mind and through the heart these expressions come out expressions of sadness, happiness, excitement, appreciation and all these things can be presented through eye contact. Not only that, eyes are important in communicating. At the same time, the way we sit, the way we stand, hmm. that is the posture. Hmm. Posture also plays a very important, very important role. Very important role, yeah. Can you speak something on this? Matter? Yes, sir. whenever the person stands, especially during any kind of presentation or normally, when they stand or when they sit, they are supposed to sit straight. They are not supposed to lean back uh, or lean very much uh, forward. forward. 
and uh, while listening there are some there are some occasions wherein the people tend to lean forward which shows that they are showing interest in listening there is a, a, a positive tinge in that but leaning forward always is not a good sign yes. and then people are not supposed to slouch they are supposed to be always straight and with their shoulders back and this again shows lot of confidence it indicates confidence and it indicates that the person is uh, uh, having strength and his uh, having a kind of assurance in himself yes and which he wants to portray it to others and in the third slide we can see madam four different positions of sitting yeah and we can come to uh, a point and a conclusion that the first one hmm. may not be interested and the second one is a bit casual yeah and the third one is uh, up to the point and the fourth one is a bit authoritative yes so the way we sit the way we stand the way we lean forward or the way we sit back so it shows our uh, attitude yes. and uh, people can easily understand, understand. analyze yeah. the character of the person so posture coming to the posture or uh, we can find certain points on the slide that is a good posture tells about your attitude your personality your mannerism <coughs> and uh, the awareness social status and values so each and every part of our body speaks soft skills doesn't mean only vocal soft skills doesn't say only communicative they also are related to non verbal communication and also to the body yeah here you find number of slides expressing or these slides present different kinds of feelings a feeling of horror a feeling of joy a feeling of surprise a feeling of self excitement happiness worry so these special slides, expressions are yeah, very important so in the classroom important. especially yeah. so these uh, uh, soft skills are also related to the facial expression not only to the posture but also to the facial expression and the next one is madam of uh, these uh, non verbal communication or the 65% of communication which we make through our body language they express our feelings and uh, on the slide you find that uh, whether the person with whom you are speaking to is willing to accept what you have said so it speaks about willingness it yeah. also tells about the dilemma whether he understood or not to yeah. be or not to be to do or not to do whether he is happy or not whether he is excited or not so all these kinds of expressions or attitudes or uh, we can read from the facial expression yeah. or also a from the postures we smile yes madam smile is considered to be a very uh, good positive. and a very positive expression yeah. and it indicates that the person is very friendly a very amiable and uh, you also have some uh, uh, other uh, facial expressions like a frown yes. <laughs> which indicates sadness and then people have sometimes have this knotted brows yeah. uh, that indicates that they are actually annoyed or it can be an indication of deep thought as well yes madam and then if you look at the portrait of mona lisa yeah. you have that smirking lips uh, which indicates sarcasm so different ways you know uh, we have this facial expressions which indicate so many things about a person yes madam yeah. and i think uh, besides this facial expression madam uh, gestures also play a very, very important role. role yes sir because in our classrooms we find students who come from uh, a sports background yeah so whenever they go to a playground once they win the match they show some symbols yeah. the winning symbol or sometimes uh, if they are defeated they show the other symbol yes and the victory also with not only victory there are other kind of gestures which we use whenever we speak about soft skills and uh, do you did you come across any such kind of situations in the classroom where students were unable to speak but they were able to express themselves through non verbal communication madam um like sir in in the photo in the in the picture that we have yeah, like slides. we have yeah we have uh, uh, certain indications like uh, like uh, the pointer showing the index finger yes. which is usually done in the classroom like and you have the victory sign any any kind of uh, good event which happens in the college like a victory sign not exactly in the classroom but i found it in the college during yeah. various events so showing the victory sign if they have won something or if their class has achieved something that is one and scratching of head which is shown in the slide that yes. is very usual a very common uh, 
gesture that we see in the classroom. Any question you ask, sometimes students do that. So maybe they are in a state of doubt or maybe they are thinking about that or there is some confusion in their mind. And uh, uh, on certain occasions, not in the classroom, but we see some certain people putting their hands on their hips. So that indicates superiority. They think yep. that you know they are in a higher place and higher yes. position. Uh, so uh, the and sometimes frustration also that is being in indicated by clenching of their fists. Fist. So uh, maybe the the younger lot, the youth, uh, if they are in a different situation, they they face different situations in life. They have such a, a kind of a gesture which uh, indicates that they are frustrated and not happy with the circumstance they are in. Yes, madam. Yeah. So I think these pictures carry messages, which are some uh, positive things and which are sometimes negative. Negative in the sense it shows the negative feelings of the person involved. And these gestures are used in the classroom and sometimes out of the classroom, depending on the atmosphere. So whatever the situation may be, people or students try to communicate themselves with these yeah. kind of gestures. And uh, here you find uh, a picture of how gestures is very important. So if possible, <coughs> try to read what gestures mean. And these gestures are used for physical movements. We use gestures to express our physical movements, whether it is happiness, whether it is a doubt, whether it is a dilemma. And uh, besides gestures, you know, the way we dress, the attire, or the kind of dressing we wear, it also plays an important role. Yeah in uh, revealing of personality. So here on the slides, you find a number of pictures where people are dressed in different kinds of costumes according to their culture, according to their tradition. So dress also plays a very yeah. important role. So manner. grooming is actually taught in the class, yes. the personal hygiene, yeah. and uh, how to dress appropriately in different uh, situations, in different places. Yes, madam. Yeah. So when we take some certain institutions, uh, uh, they have a dress code. Yes. They are supposed to wear a uniform. The main thing behind this is all students should be should appear equal, 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 or they should be uniformity in the kind of dressing. So dressing also plays a very important role, as you can find on the slide, clothing and uh, dressing. Yeah. So the importance of dressing is, uh, uh, it gives a strong visual appeal, whether the person is suitable for the job or not. Yes. So when you are in an MNC, when you are the chairman of an MSA, you are supposed to wear a certain kind of a dress. Whether you go for a party, you are supposed to kind. But in India, uh, generally, we don't follow these kind of things, except a few sections of the society. Yeah. Normally, we go with our own casual wearing. But this dressing also plays an important, very important role. role. So uh, what we can say is, style is a man. Yeah. We use the word style is a man. The way you look expresses your personality. And here, Besides all these things, that is postures, gestures, we have also one more important topic related to the nonverbal <coughs> communication, and that is the paralinguistics. This is very important uh, in our life because uh, knowingly or unknowingly, we'll be doing, we'll be operating these paralinguistics in our daily life. Yeah. You know, what is your opinion? Yeah, about this? regarding uh, paralinguistics, the tone of the voice is very important. Yeah. So it should not be uh, high pitched. It should not be low pitched, but it should be evenly pitched. So that indicates that the person is confident uh, while speaking. And then uh, there are certain people who uh, like stammer, but it is not in them, but because of fear, they fear. stammer. So they have to overcome confusion. that. Yes, fear and confusion. And articulation and enunciation are very important because they have to be very clear uh, about the words that they use when they pronounce and when they speak f uh, sentences. There, there should be clarity in their speech. Yeah. So, coming to the last point, madam, related to paralinguistics, we have two important things. One is uh, touch, and the one is uh, other one is uh, distance. So, touch also gives you confidence. Yeah. At the same time, assurance. At the same time, you are caring for it for somebody. Mm -hmm. It also shows authority. And the last point, madam, coming to the paralinguistics, that is uh, distance. So distance plays a very important role in our daily classroom transaction. Yes. Not only in the classroom, in the office also. We are supposed to maintain a certain level of distance. So coming to the last point when distance, yeah. uh, I would like you to focus. So, so, uh, sometimes we all need a personal space. So yeah. there is a limit for space, personal space. And then you have the, uh, this, 
and then you have uh, uh, the the space wherein you have to interact with the other people. Yes. So that is the social space, and then you have the public space. Yes. So there are three different levels. One is the intimate one. Intimate intimate is for completely yourself. How much space you need for yourself to be comfortable with, and when it comes to the personal, it depend. It uh, you have to relate it to the family. When you are interacting with your daughter or son, how much space you require. So that the distance will be very little. It is one and a half to four feet. And then coming to the social, in, uh, in that particular platform, when you're talking to friends or when you're talking to your colleagues or when you're talking to your classmates, how much distance you need to maintain. That is four to 12 feet. And the last one is while uh, any kind of public speaking, how much distance you need to uh, maintain. So that is more than 12 feet. So yes, these, are, these are the parameters actually given uh, to us to follow so that we can uh, abide with it uh, in different situations. Yes, but generally we do all these things, but uh, uh, we are not particular about this kind of uh, maintaining distance, uh, which plays a very important role. And it also focuses or uh, reflects our personality. When you speak to an officer, you are supposed to maintain distance. As you have told, when you are speaking to your children, sometimes to students also we are supposed to maintain a certain kind of distance so all these points are very important uh, as a part of a uh, soft skills and students till now we saw what soft skills are and the six questions related to soft skills the five wh questions and one is a h question the first one is uh, what soft skills are next one is uh, uh, how we can make use of soft skills where do we use soft skills when do we use soft skills who needs soft skills at the same time how can you acquire soft skills? So, as a general definition, I would like to tell you that soft skills are nothing but skills which already you have and which you are supposed to make use of uh, in situations uh, as per the demand. We generally have soft skills, but uh, we are supposed to groom them. We are supposed to tune our soft skills. We are supposed to elevate the level of soft skills so that we become competent and we, or we become employable because uh, after education we need a job. Once we get a job we are supposed to go to the higher levels. Not only that, we are supposed to communicate with uh, society, with a number of people in the society. We talk with uh, uh, a fellow from an un uneducated family. We talk to the higher level officers. So at different levels we need different kinds of uh, communicative skills which are nothing but a part of soft skills and uh, before we conclude I would like to say soft social soft skills is an umbrella word which uh, uh, comprises communication skills people skills or uh, employable skills interpersonal and all skills. personal skills yeah. interpersonal skills which are related to the social and the emotional intelligence yes. so with these points uh, we would like to conclude this session and if possible we will communicate with you with uh, some more topics in the near future. Thank you for your patience and uh, kind listening. Thank, Thank you, you very Madam. much. Thank you, sir.